Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Boobies and Newbies. You can follow us at Boobies Podcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And if you'd like to support the podcast and get a little extra bonus boobies content every month, you can support us on Patreon at Boobies Podcast. novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today I'm joined by fellow lady pod squatters, Kate and Murda, the hosts of There Will Be Porn, a podcast about vintage porn recapped by millennial women who are mostly okay with butt stuff. (laughs) And considering the subject matter of today's review, I don't think there's anybody better suited for this episode's book. So welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. I'm so excited. And where are you podcasting from today? Uh, Brooklyn, New York. I'm Murda. Caitlin just oh, so you know, just so you know the difference. In yeah, voice. our voices. <laughs> they do sound pretty different. I, um, unlike they, most, you know, yeah. criticisms of women voices. <laughs> I can pick it up. I can pick up who's who just from listening yeah. to you. Even though we grew up in the same place and might have pro- we probably have similar accents or like uh weird weird uh idioms. idioms yeah. yeah. Are you both like native Brooklynites, Brooklyn folk? No. no. We we met in middle school in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Mm-hmm. Oh, we Florida. okay. That is quite a trek. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah I, the, I would say it is, but a lot of people, we both, we also went to college together and mm-hmm. then she moved here right after college. I mm-hmm. moved here four years ago. So I don't, I guess it was like five or so years after college. Yeah. That math I moved is hard. Here. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, mental math is very hard. Uh, it's correct. very hard. We're podcasters. Um, we don't need to know anything about math. Exactly. <laughs> what is math? But, um, yeah, almost all of our, a lot of our friends after college moved here. So it almost feels like home. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it's not like a four, it definitely was not a, 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 a big social move for us. In right. fact, it was like an upgrade because Florida sucks. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I've never been to Florida or New York, but I have a lot of friends that are in Brooklyn from college too, because we went to school for theater. Right. So yeah. they all kind of made the trek out there. Yeah, yeah, That makes sense. They did not make the move to Florida. So no, no, no don't go there not for theater. Don't go there. Terrible <laughs> idea. Not for yeah. theater. Fair enough. I I bet um, Brooklyn and New York in general are a lot like L.A. where uh, I'm podcasting from in that I feel like a lot of the people here aren't from here. They move here. Yes. Yes. Sure. A hundred percent. I mean, you get a mixture. You get a lot of people from I think too. uh, New York is like a black hole. It (laughs) sucks up all of the air and the energy for every state and county and major metropolitan area around it. That is correct. So so. Well, we all of- wear black here. Exactly. So it's very fitting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so if not, if you did not grow up actually in the city or in Brooklyn, you probably grew up pretty close. So even if you know, so there's a lot of people who are transplants, but like my partner, he's from an hour north of New York. So yeah. and like all of his friends mostly are from New York or New York area so it's a lot of that as well no and you say you wear a lot of black which is clear yes. because we're doing this via skype and yes. you're both repping <laughs> your black i'm even wearing black today yes. i feel like i'm better yeah. suited for new york than i am yeah. la <laughs> and it's also like one of the hottest days of the year in yeah so right wearing now. black not great but it fits our brand yeah, so. no, I'm with you. I'm glad to hear, though, that we're all sweating all over the country, yes. all over the world. There's like a yeah. massive heat wave. Yes. World sweat. Yes. I think it would solve our water world crisis with the world sweat. But Yeah. No need to work out either. I feel like I'm just burning calories uh, existing. Daily. Yeah. yeah. I know. I need to. I need to like cut down on my sodium intake though, just to like <laughs> let out some of this like sweat that I'm holding into my body a little more. Oh, God, I'm like okay. a big old sponge. I'm a, a salt. Just like come over and I'm a salt. There you go. There you go. I mean, it's gonna if be I like get, the if new I keto diet, except later. it's gonna be like the salto, <laughs> like just sweat out the Ooh, salt. This is Ooh. this is the new fetish we're gonna start in New York, and it's gonna like it's a new global warming fetish where we all just lick each <laughs> yes. other. 
Because, because we need salt. You, <laughs> you know, New York is just sounding better and better to me. <laughs> like, this is not, this would not fly in yeah. LA. People would be asking about right. like the carb intake. Sure, sure. Kitty, kitty, kitty eco play. We're just, oh. <laughs> is that a question? In, uh, is that a question in LA? What is the carbon footprint of your fetish? <laughs> Yeah, it should be. If it's not, it should be. It should be. It's important. I, I think. I think LA definitely does need to do a little bit of soul searching because I recently was like on my boyfriend and I were just looking through Netflix and Amazon and I was like, there is so much trash on here. Mm-hmm. Like this mm-hmm. is this is global warming. If we're gonna talk well, about, that's this. why people move to LA. They move to LA to soul search for a little bit and then they realize, wow, this is not where I should be, and they leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's oh. kind of how it goes <laughs> man I was thinking of moving to LA now I'm gonna rethink it no I don't know it sounds like New York's the place to be I, I have yet to go oh, but I made it to Chicago come. that's as far east as I went mm-hmm. you gotta come I that is that is true I even after living here for like four years and hating lots of parts of it like it is still the best place in the world, like 100%. Brooklyn gets the official there will be porn endorsement. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Stamped. Stamped and approved. Although Sponsored most porn, by the city of Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Although most porn happens in L.A. Yeah. And Florida. So yes. really we're experts yeah. exactly. too. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. So perfect segue. Speaking <laughs> of porn in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the book Prince of Sin by Cass mm. Ford. Mm-hmm. And this contemporary romance is a fresh one published just a month or so ago in June of 2019 and is available on Amazon for Four ninety nine Kindle edition. So much smut at such a low price. <laughs> um, and I was asked to read and review a copy of the book by the author Cass Ford, who just so happens to also live in L.A. Amazing. I almost wonder if she has some sort of connection to the porn industry or like some stories to tell. Yeah, I think somewhere oh, what in the foreword it said that like there was like a thank you for being able to go on set. And so I was like, oh, she did her research. Yeah. She got into that when she had sweaty that great, room. She had that great page at the back, sure. too, that was like, I wouldn't have been able to do this without all the research I did on these terms yeah. and these words. Yeah. And, yeah. oh, that was so good. I want to, like, frame that and yes. put that in my room. I <laughs> loved like, this that. Is my, this is my kink explainer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, and it's, exactly. it's very funny. There was a... I mean, I, I feel like I'm jumping into it a little bit ahead of time, but 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 <laughs> okay. I, and I don't mean to do it on purpose. But the fact that they let her on set, we, we actually interviewed a, a guy who wrote a porn mm-hmm. and he also was a journalist. Mm-hmm. And when he pitched it to the producers that the main their main concern was that they were they did not want any anyone on set. Like that was not. Mm. Yeah, they were like very uncomfortable with journalists being involved, or like at e- all, even though he with was their not. Process. And so it was just. It's funny to me that there's like there is this like element of the 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 industry that lets people like outsiders in, which seemed right. Like I I don't know. Yeah. I guess. Well, I guess maybe if I'm writing a romance novel, it's different than I'm reporting right. news. Yes. Right. Yeah. Although I'm yeah. like, is this autobiographical? What? what <laughs> how did this go down, Cass? Like, I want to know. There's, there's so many. Ter- Another thing that we do on our podcast is we will like research porn stars and we'll read articles about their career. And we're often like just reading about the industry. And there's so many terms in this book that felt like really real. That felt like the right lingo. Yeah, That's something that as we get into it, I definitely want to ask you both about because you know, you're the experts here. And um, (laughs) I, there were so many things I felt like I was learning just from reading this book. So We will get into that. In her email to me, Cass described her sex positive mission with the following statement, women who enjoy smut shouldn't feel ashamed. And I couldn't agree more. And so I was really excited. Yeah, absolutely. I might get that tattooed on me. Yeah. There you go. Phenomenal. Uh, It's a good one. No, we absolutely shouldn't be ashamed. And actually, some of the smut I read is significantly better than like thought pieces in McSweeney's. So yeah. I'm yeah, fine with that. Absolutely. I'm not I'm personally not a big romance novel reader, but I've never been I like I think that part of why I like like 
I, I'm also like, even personally, my porn is pretty vanilla. But like, part of why I like exploring porn and like that we're talking about it is because like, I think our biggest motto too is like, we never yuck anyone's yums, and mm-hmm. that and that's exactly what like romance novel is. Is like, if you and also if anything, kudos to like, I f- actually like. I will judge a, a, a rom-com before I would judge a romance novel because I'm like, kudos to you. You're actually reading a book. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, 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 who cares what if it got you to do it? Like, well, who the fuck cares? And also, mm-hmm. if this makes you happy, make like, no one should judge right, anyone. Right, right. No uh, king shaming here. Mm-mm. Exactly. No. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a fan of There Will Be Porn, but I came into it a little late. So I'd love to know... One, where the podcast came from, the whole idea, conception. Oh, oh that's a journey. And then two, you guys <laughs> go way back, right? You went to school together. So I'd love to hear about right. your friendship, too. So in 2001, after 9 <laughs> 11. <laughs> that's kind of true. Wow. It, did, wow. it does start at 9 11. That's so true. Oh, my God. It's like no. legit, like you ready 2001. It absolutely has everything to do with 9 11. So this porn would not exist without 9 11 because. Oh my gosh. Our school every year would go to Washington, D.C. for their eighth grade trip. Uh-huh. And the year Got that it. we were supposed to do it was 9 11. 9/11. 11. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, of course, teachers were like, maybe we shouldn't take the, these small children to Carnage. Let's take and, them and fly them and, and like, fly them and on the a plane ter- shortly after things have happened. Yeah, and the fact that ter- the terrorists were trained like, uh, like, like in a Florida, five minute drive near from where our we house. Were. So, yeah, like, <laughs> so we were so they were like, let's put up all these kids on a bus and drive them to Williamsburg, Virginia. <laughs> Ooh, and saucy. Meredith and I were <laughs> Meredith and I were randomly placed in a hotel room with yes. I think three or four other girls yeah. or something. And uh, throughout the course of the trip, Meredith was like, you're a fucking weirdo. I'm a fucking weirdo. Yep. Let's be friends. Oh, my gosh. You both had was... a meet cute. That was like a legit yeah. Yeah. meet totally cute. Yeah, totally did. We <laughs> truly did. Uh, I think it was the part of a pillow fight was involved. Oh, yeah, Ooh. there was. But not a sexy kind because no. we were children. Yes. But, uh, yeah, and then since, what was that, f- like 14 years ago, 15 years ago? Yeah. But, um, I mean, and then we ended up going to the same college. Yeah. <laughs> And we right we we parted in high school. I really yeah. went way back for yes, just our fucking did. podcast. <laughs> well, we had to, we had we to go have, to the very beginning, to which was nine eleven. Take you on podcast journey. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I ended up going to college, and then Meredith ended up moving to New York and moving in with me because she didn't know that many people up here, and uh, and then Meredith also introduced me to podcasts when we were in college, and anyway, and then one day she was like, "Let's make one," and I was like, "Cool." And I love to figure out technology. And she was also like, she, you know, part, you were like a comedian, you were trying to work your way through comedy in the city. Like, you know, it's like checking up for her. I was like, I, you know, I'm, I'm in finance. Like I, but you know, I think like many confident white bros, we have that same amount of confidence as white bros. And we were like, like, whatever we talk about is interesting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Whatever we talk about is interesting. We. <laughs> it's your your big clit energy. It's yes. our big clit yeah. energy. Yeah. yeah. Watch out yeah. if we play beer pong against you. It's intense. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's really not an identity we should be slinging around. No. But anyway, um, we so but we did make a podcast that was got decently successful. That was just us recapping Twin Peaks, um, and then Twin Peaks ended. And one of the best sadly. episodes we sadly yeah. yes well I hated it Meredith loved it you know it's very divisive <laughs> <laughs> but um, I feel like I'm somewhere in between cool, yes. cool. yeah um, but one of our best episodes that we loved was we did a spoof a uh, porn spoof of Twin Peaks we watched it and recapped it yeah from the 90s and uh, and then we just decided well what can we recap next and it was like let's do the top 100 porn films of all time. And uh, here we are. You aren't choosing random porn to review no, 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 for no. There Will Be Porn. This is coming off an actual list. Yes, yes. it's AVN, the awards, who the adult video network, I think Yes, it is. It is. Yes. They give out, a, it's like the Oscars for, for yeah. porn. Yes. Um, it's their top 100 of all time. And so we're, we're on 75 now. We're doing pretty good. That's yeah. pretty great. I, I mean, we've, you know, that's, we have like a, fa- uh, a favorite actor. Yeah. We have like a... We have a porn to recommend. We, I've now feel like I have created. I'm curating a 
uh, a like a, a porn playlist for possible children one day where I'll yeah, be like to like teach them one to show them good cunnilingus scenes if you know sure, you gotta sure, learn sure. early important. yes uh, but also like this these are the non misogynist ones yeah so you can you're, these are approved yeah <laughs> I love that like we'll still have a gangbang in there but like it's gonna be sure. a, but we're gonna have the the early scene in the beginning where the girl is like yes I want I asked for this gangbang and I yes. cannot wait yes to, absolutely you know enthusiastic consent kind mm-hmm. of thing oh, yeah. so so yeah uh it's it's fun no it sounds fun <laughs> we are the only porn podcast out there that's hosted by women <laughs> and comes at it from a feminist point of view so there you go take that and put it in your that bucket. should be that should yes. be your new tagline you come yes. at it come from a feminist it. point of yeah. view well, and also i mean it's also just like uh the truth is too the porns we're watching are like when they had actual like this is when they and they even reference in this in the book it's like when they actually made a lot more money on porns yes they had you had to like go to higher you had to go to a theater in some cases to see them or like rent a booth at a video store or something like that so there's a lot of production value the most of these people i think are people that like uh used to be like are probably failed act like la actors but they sure. happen to have a hot bod and a big dick so they you know decided <laughs> yes. that this yes. is a good option for them mm-hmm. or they're women and they like sex and they you know that's another good option for them so it's just like it's uh there there's a lot of storyline and it's really fun to kind of improv those storylines and fill in the gaps and and that's essentially like most of what we're doing is just kind yeah. of making light fun of uh the decor in the room oh, yeah. like well, and, and as somebody who listens to there will be porn i i feel like i don't need to watch these porns while listening <laughs> to it. like that's always my that's fear when i when i listen to like movie review podcasts or anything that way i'm like oh my gosh is this gonna ruin it for me like do i need to watch it no. first but that's not the case with your show yes <laughs> we don't have to issue spoiler alerts yes. <laughs> it's like it's like spoiler alert they're about to bang <laughs> didn't see that one coming oh <laughs> no it's good so where can everybody find there will be porn and listen to you and subscribe and all that jazz um you can find us at morebanana.com that's the podcast network um it's there it's on the front page but you can also just look up there will be porn on spotify stitcher uh apple podcast all the apps Every, everywhere it's yeah, everywhere awesome and then lastly do you have any you know off the top of your head fave porn recommendations to make i mean whether it's your favorite yes. My, your yes. favorite kind of lingus scene whatever my it bear is lady. my bear lady my my bear lady yeah. everyone in the world should see needs to see this porn yeah it's a spoof of my fair lady it's a musical no. it's a I get musical a no. about it. <laughs> with original music original music and the stars in it are definitely failed musical theater yeah. actors oh. it's incredible oh. and the sex in it is very hot. good like that hot you don't always get both like you yes. don't always get good storyline and good sex like yeah. usually it's not they're not they're mutually exclusive There's, but this ugh. there is so good. every sex scene is hot like yeah. very hot hot bods real bods i never never would love. have expected my bear lady that's what it is yes, my, my bear, bear lady, lady. And, i never would have expected my, that to be a hot movie <laughs> so hot well it's, it's great it, and uh, also I, very funny yeah, it's also very funny very funny and we fell in love with we found and fell in love with our my at least my i i'm no mine my, also mine our favorite he's so good at going down like really going down we've on a seen woman. a lot like, of enthusiasm. men on film go down on women and he really could is it is just wonderful victorious my corner my corner it, everyone my corner is the best google it i'm writing i'm writing it all down <laughs> right now um where can i watch my bear lady because i mean i guess that's, i think it's free that's my I other think... question is how do you get a hold of like old porn? so we try we always try to pay for porn okay. if we can yes but the problem the i will say the problem with what we with what we're doing is because some of these porns are so old they're not being distributed gotcha. anymore yeah so we do end up like sometimes going to them down like a dark like 
uh, Russian site that happened to have like web. a weird. We're like, we don't want drugs. We just yeah. want this old porn. Yeah. <laughs> so like we it, it like ends up having like it's in like four different video segments on different pages and what it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. We're like, we have to find it. But uh, that is that is like the hardest part of doing this whole thing is sometimes finding sure. the porn. Uh, we will skip them if we just like cannot. can't find them. Yeah. Uh, but we if it is available for purchase, we purchase them. Um, and mm-hmm. I think my bear lady, I can't remember if that was one we paid for, if we had to find, but I, uh, I'm almost, uh, it is, it is not too difficult to find. And I recommend watching it with your friends or like, ev- oh, it's, it's just so, so fun. fun. Oh yeah. I'm it's having so a fun. girls weekend coming up. So I feel like I know what we're going to be doing now. Yes. You've you got to, to watch it. You've got to. We replayed Fabulous. the songs and sang yes. them together. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's just a good time. Yeah. Uh, anyway. It's yeah. It's very good. So we definitely suggest that. I, I will happily <laughs> take that suggestion and run with it. So yes. thank you for my bear lady and for bringing that into my life. You're, You're very welcome. <laughs> tell, us what, tell us what you think okay. we can do. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I, this is normally where I would say like, okay, let's stop talking about porn and talk about romance. But um, <laughs> that's not the case with this book. So we're just going to segue from one no. porn to another here. <laughs> Great. Yes. And Great. That's our bo- our wheelhouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but before we talk about the book, I have to ask, had either of you, and I think you mentioned this a little bit, had either of you read a romance novel before reading Prince of Sin? I have. I devour them. Yeah. I read them all yes. the time. Yes. Okay. I have, a, I have an iPad mini. I read them in bed. Uh, my has helped write them. I, I, that's right. I wrote one. I forgot about that. <laughs> I, I was a ghostwriter on one, so I can't tell you which one it is, oh. but I did, I did help <laughs> write one. Yeah. That one was not as hot as I thought it would be, <laughs> which is not my fault. Uh, what else? Oh, but I've been reading them. My mom like had them in the backseat of her car. Yes. She had like a pirate of her own or whatever. And that's basically where I learned about sex. Oh my gosh. I mean, gosh. not that my mom didn't talk about sex. She had romance novels in the backseat of her car, but I just, that was <laughs> when I was curious, I'm like 12 years old. I'd pick one up and be like, <gasps> member. <laughs> what? And I've been reading them ever since. They're, they're great. They're great. I mean, some of them are, it's like with anything. It's like with TV shows. Some of them are bad. Some of them are amazing and yeah. groundbreaking yeah. and everyone should read them. Uh, I no, I'm not a romance novel reader. Uh, no, again, no shame in doing so. I, I, I guess my biggest besides Caitlin, you know, and her helping with ghostwriting, uh, I, I, a friend of mine, his mom is actually a oh, romance cool. novel what? writer. Who? I didn't uh, know this. Mike, uh, I won't say it. Well, no, I, I will say it. Can, can we can say I her say name? It and then, and then I'll say her name. Yeah, you can say I, her name. I don't want to say his name. That's fair. But because her, it's a pen name, Got obviously. It. But her name's Darlene Marshall. Okay. And she. She writes all historical Florida romance novels. Oh my god! And like the, last year, she <laughs> I have to read these. Yeah, like last year, she like came up for like a I don't know where remember like some co- like a romance novel like convention or something conference convention and and like somewhere in the Northeast, I think Boston. And then she came and stayed with us for a few days. I was living with him, and he because. Uh, because there's like a, a good like medical uh library in New York that like has like a whole bunch of infectious diseases that were like, <laughs> popular in Florida and like pirates and stuff and I was just like of course that's why she's here it's, it was really fun. oh my god the amount of research that goes into a romance novel should not I, be shied away I'll, from it, it is a lot no they are wonderful she, I think that that's like partly what she takes like the most like clearly like takes it very seriously i'm still i'm of- still stuck on historical novels set in florida i'm very yes. curious no, there's not a yes. lot of history there yes pre like there's Spanish. a ton of history yeah that's what it's i think it's about mostly yeah but compared to like europe you know where your neighborhood's well, three thousand years old but it's the floor it's the oldest like city in the country that is correct. so it's okay, like fine okay so fine. it's like the earliest settle- yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so it's like the earliest settlement there's a lot of history in florida and ter- like in terms of comparatively i'm gonna have to know. check that out too but it's gonna yes. have to wait until i watch my bear lady so <laughs> I mean, i've got a list now <laughs> we're giving you homework yeah. right now i don't think she's like super prolific it's something like she started doing in her retirement but like oh, she's my but dream yeah, i know that she like started like i think she's been interviewed on npr or like some you know like like That's or great. some sort of you know she's 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 working she's working the her way you know okay trying to get out there yeah i like that okay whoops gosh you're just 
building up my summer reading and watching for me here. So, I mean, I've got lots to explore after we finish up with Prince of Sin. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, and I'll definitely want to hear um, after having read this book, if that changed your opinions on the genre in general, especially mm. our yeah. reader who hasn't really read romance before, but yeah. mm-hmm. that's for later. Mm-hmm. So for now... Let me give everyone a brief synopsis of Prince of Sin so they're all caught up with what we've got going on here. And then we'll dive into our review. So before we get to our synopsis, let's take a break for a quick PodCoin promo. PodCoin is the app that pays you to listen to this podcast and all your other favorites. Just get the PodCoin app on iPhone or Android. It's free, super easy to use, and you can use the PodCoins you earn to claim gift cards or donate to charity. Check out the PodCoin app and use the invite code BOOBSNOOBS to earn 300 PodCoins just for signing up. And now, back to the Boobylicious content. Here is your synopsis courtesy of Amazon.com. When savvy gossip vlogger Morgan Sidney gets assigned the breakup of porn's most illustrious couple, she strikes a deal with her boss. If she scores an exclusive, she'll get promoted. So when the famous and flirtatious Prince of Sin offers to fulfill her three wildest sex fantasies, Morgan must decide whether she'll keep things professional or surrender and explore her sensual side. Okay, I have to pause because... For anybody that's listening to this podcast, they're probably going to hear children laughing and playing in the background because I record (laughs) in my apartment and I just, I need to make an announcement that I am not talking about porn or romance novels within earshot of children. It just happens to be summer vacation and they're playing outside all fucking day long. (laughs) So that's that's my disclaimer for this episode. It's a romance novel toward horror horror podcast podcast like uh yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be one of them is going to be like the subject of a podcast someday of like why did they kill all these women? You know, oh because they listened to their neighbor recording about erotica. That's why. Right. Right. Oh boy. Okay, anyway, Prince of Sin. <laughs> As someone who despises the media, why is Chase Prince spending time with a reporter? Clearly he's intrigued, but can a scorched sinner and the biggest smut star around let a fierce civilian enter his domain? Prince of Sin takes readers beyond Tinseltown's glossy Hollywood hills to Silicon Valley for a behind-the-scenes look at a sometimes bleak, always risque world. Okay. I feel like that's a pretty accurate description. Yeah, yes. no, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It pretty it, much covers it. It had yeah. like a telenovela spin to it, which really fit into the pacing of this book. Yes. Yeah, uh, for sure. It definitely happens. was not. I, You know, I thought, OK, this is about the porn industry. And Cass Ford had like prefaced that and said she wanted to take the sex positive spin on it. And I I feel like a lot of books I've read in the past, if they've had anything to do with sex, sex workers or the porn industry, it's kind of just in the background, and this yeah. book puts yeah. it at the forefront, which yes, I sure. thought was so unique and mm-hmm. really refreshing in a way. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, yeah, there was lot. There's lots of things like uh, I, I, I think that my heart, my, I think I, I had mentioned that the, you know, we met a friend that we interviewed someone who actually wrote a porn and they wouldn't let him on set and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I think like one, the suspect, like I had two levels of sus- like difficulty of suspending my disbelief. disbelief one yeah. was that element that there was this reporter on set all the time. And two, uh, that anyone cared about covering the relationships or the, or the biography or the, uh, you know, the pin Prince, Falling from his throne element on any type of gossip magazine. Like no one cares about porn stars. Well, and and the fact that they would let her in, not even as a reporter, because I feel like she can barely call herself a reporter. Like she writes (laughs) for like National Enquirer. I mean, she writes for 
a pure scan isn't the the newspaper or magazine isn't it called scandal or scan slander slander, slander. slander. It- I- I mean, come on, right there in the title. <laughs> there was another, there was one point of continuity I was confused by. There were a, a couple. <laughs> yeah. But the first one, slander seemed, what I actually really liked is it seemed to be mapping off of like TMZ. Yes. Yes. At the same time, she was a vlogger and they kept being like, you're a vlogger, you're that vlogger, you're on that gossip vlog. But she wrote things. Yeah. I might be old. My understanding of vlogging is that it's a video. Video, involved. video blogging. Yeah. 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 That's, I know, that, yeah. Was, that was me too. I was like, oh. Wait, so people know her, like they see her and they know her from her videos, but That's, it sounds like she's writing stories about them. I'm yeah, confused. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you would think. Yeah, you would think that if, if, as someone who is vlogging for a TMZ type of, you know, uh, publication, that that her face would be a lot more known, or like she would also, you know, they may- that she wouldn't use a pseudonym because yeah. it's your whole face, yeah. right? <laughs> and they, I think they make a lot of, uh, they make a lot about her, like not really caring that much about how she looks yeah. and that she's not that she's not a vain. Uh, nor a normal vain LA girl and she takes her her job seriously and she has like career aspirations all you know all the stuff you want to read about a woman I guess or like believe in a woman but right. uh you know or you, you in a in a heroine in a in a romance novel yes. that is that is pretty normal for yeah. a heroine. So yeah. it was just so I think that that yeah the vlogging element of that I was like so she's not a vlogger or she is a vlogger. Yeah. I'm not a confused. journalist, but she is a journalist, yes. but she's not. I kept, <laughs> I kept thinking of it as like she writes articles because like I blog for a few websites and I kept thinking it, of it as like she writes articles, but then like maybe there's like videos like interspersed yeah, with maybe. them. But okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't know that. I don't know that world super well. Yeah. So, I was I was picturing her as like a Lucy Fink on like or like a you know Refinery twenty one twenty nine like cool. BuzzFeed kind yeah. of vit- vlogger. That's what I was picturing. But then they never really said that. I was like, okay, I guess that's not what. She and said, to be but, fair, uh, it does yeah. not. I mean, we're reading into it. Doesn't it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter in the context of the <laughs> so story. Doesn't matter. So doesn't matter. I just, I guess, I guess it was just. The, I think that I think that, again, and the biggest suspension of disbelief I had was that they cared about following this re- okay. relationship at all. The, That's the yeah. part that I was just like. When did porn stars become so famous? <laughs> that, like, well, and if that's if is, that's like the biggest yeah. disbelief you need to suspend, that's I think you're doing okay with the romance I agree, novel. I like, agree. I think that's yeah. pretty good. I agree. I agree. This does remind me on our podcast. I'm constantly trying to talk about like how big the dick is, <laughs> and Meredith is like, there are only throw pillows on that bed. <laughs> How come they don't have a single normal pillow? I'm like, Meredith, I really don't think that's the focus of this film, but I love I you. I think <laughs> Meredith and I run on a similar mind yes. path. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm constantly doing the same. I went to school for theater, and if I go see a play now, I feel like I'm ruined because I'll be like, ah, well, oh. that's, a, that's an interesting lighting scheme. Exactly. Hmm. Oh. I don't know about that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you see all the wrinkles. That's how yeah. I feel during sex. I'm like, oh, that's the line you're going to use for this scene. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. God. Okay. But I mean, the the synopsis kind of sets it up pretty clearly. Morgan yeah. Sidney. Um, I, okay. Maybe it was just me. Here's another me reading into throw pillows kind of thing. But um, <laughs> reading I, into throw pillows. That's going to be the new thing. Oh, I'm reading into the throw pillows. But yeah. um, did you find it annoying that... Um, there were two characters in the story who had very similar sounding names. Ooh. Yeah, uh, her mom, her mom, and, and then the, the porn star. And the porn star. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, Kaya and Callie. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know because yeah. I wrote that down. I was like Morgan Sydney. It always I don't know what it is, but it bothers me when people have like two first names as their name. Like they're they're usually yeah. serial killers, yes. right? From what and I understand. And so I'm like, yeah. okay, well you can't control that. That's fine, but. Kaya and Callie. I was like, they're two four letter K names. K names. Like, yeah. it was just, right. I would have to read it twice to be like, okay, wait, is she talking about the porn star or is that her mom? Like, I'm yeah. confused. Although, both the porn star and her mom in this book, feminist icons. Yes. Like, way more feminist icons than Morgan was. I mean, we can talk about that. I think, yeah. that's, that's a good thing to I mention. Think, I think if we're talking, yeah, I think if we're going to go, if we're going to 
identify a character in the story who is probably based in reality. Uh, Kali or Callie mm-hmm. is is a perfect example of that because I definitely envision most of the porn stars that I that you we know, watch that we watch are people who are choosing this this like this is their profession, right? right? Like they've came to this, they like sex, they get off on, you know, being filmed on, on camera. They understand, they understand the industry and what they're getting into. Um, and I really, yeah, that, that to me is an element of porn that I, um, that I really appreciate in terms of being, uh, you know, highlighted in this yeah in this book. yeah well and then similarly okay. i know um if we're talking about the other k name kaya um morgan's mom i found her to be a really interesting character in that you you really don't see a lot of her until closer to the end and we have morgan yeah. paints this picture of her as being that she grew up in this this very religious rigid like conservative family and yeah then yeah. we find out, you know, the mom basically shares with her, like, oh, yeah, no, I, I knew that you were dating a, a porn star, like, you know, because mom watches porn, too. Like, yeah. And I was like, well, that's OK. I like that they're having this discussion, too. And the mom's also reinforcing the fact that, you know, there are different types of porn. She's looking for something that's, mm-hmm. you know, a little less gratuitous. Is that what we should say? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I feel like everybody, for the most part, all the characters in this book were really representative of, like, uh, at least character types in the porn industry. Like, you have the people who are there mm-hmm. because they really do love sex and they, they get off on being there. Like you said, like we see with Callie. And then also the people who are there because it's a job. Like, you know, they're yeah. Yeah. that's very much... Um, the Prince of Sin. I mean, that's very much Chase's yeah. point of view is I'm here to work. I think so, too. He has like no passion for it, but but also doesn't feel like degraded yeah. or like bad about doing mm-hmm. it. He's just like, I, you know, he's a normal kind of worker like me. He's showing right. up nine to five and I've, you know, like and I'm yeah. good. He takes pride in his job. And then right. that's that. Like what, you know, he does. His emotion is is detached from it, which is great. I think also like. Um, I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming in like romance novels, there's a trope of like, I'm assuming the mostly the, the main female heroine of a romance novel is like supposed to be the audience's, the reader's entry into the book. Right. Whereas like I did, I think that for me, my most problematic character of this whole book was Morgan. Same. Yeah. I didn't like her nearly as much as I liked everyone else. Yeah. Like, and actually, and her, when we first started talking about the reading this book together she hated chase and i was like i don't actually i think chase is fine i mm-hmm. actually I thought like, he had the much more complete story arc between yes, the two and, of them and also like he is a person who knows what he wants yeah he uh he says what he wants clearly to women like mm-hmm. he i mean sure he's problematic about some of the things he says about his ex yeah like I think that everyone, everyone scorned earth. Like I, you know, like I give a man a pass on that. Like, but th- in general, like the way he treated his friend, Kali and, and everyone else on set, like it was always really lovely. Yeah. My, my, I think for Morgan, because like, she, I guess I get it though, because she's, she's like, she's saying opinions that most women have about, or maybe people who don't really quite understand porn in terms of like holistically that mm-hmm. they are look at, the industry with uh judgmental eyes and i think that 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 makes sense why she's written that way but it still is like a little bit of annoying as being someone who is a little more uh enlightened in that way sure i want to defend myself (laughs) (laughs) and compliment the writer in a way because in the beginning of this book i truly hated the guy character because he was very like like I just like fuck bitches get money like I'm going to just come and then I'm never going to talk to this girl again. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so you're terrible. Um, but then like a third of the way through the book, it, it it turns out that he was kind of like all bark and no bite. Yeah. That he even though he was like, you know, this like Prince of Sin playboy who only wanted to like come on people. It ended up he was kind of a yeah, nice he guy. Was just yeah. Basically, like and fulfilling he was just, this like, image hurt. that like people had like painted of him. Yeah. And I suddenly like had sympathy for him a third of the way through the book and could care less about Morgan and what she wanted from him. And I was just like, what's your, like, Chase, what are you doing with your career? How's your mom? Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. Your, I think that's a great health, thing to man? point out is, 
And what I really like too is I feel like in a lot of stories I've read, like for example, we actually reviewed a book about um, a male stripper and like the, the book series is about male strippers. And by the end of the book, he leaves his life as a male stripper to like pursue something else. And I almost wanted him to stay as a stripper because I was like, this yeah. isn't a message that being a stripper is wrong. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. and yeah. I liked that about this book in that there was never really, nobody was necessarily pushing for Chase to quit doing porn. Yeah. Like Morgan, yeah. it, it becomes basically like an excuse for them to have a problem. But I feel like if he continued doing it, it, she was almost okay with it. And then Oh, I loved that. Yeah. yeah. I love that she was like, I recognize that the sex you have yeah. for work is work. I, yeah. yeah. I think oh, I think obviously I loved that. And I and I obviously think that like because she was exposed to it on set, that allowed her to do it. Like exactly. you could see like how professional it was and that everyone like took like it was literally just a day job for them. So right. um and there was no feelings there and that they, you know, that it, it, I think that having her on set, uh, like, it's great. I think that that was like, and you know, and it's really funny because there is so much sex in this, in this book, but not a lot of it is hot. I yeah. mean, there is a lot of hot romance. I wrote that because, too. I wrote that note down because, too. Because there's so much of it being about the job. Business. Yeah. 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 So, and like, like the gangbang with Kali and Chase, like the first sex scene she goes on set to see, like, mm -hmm. that's a perfect example. I was like, this is not hot. Like, yeah. I, mm -hmm. you know, like, I love a good gangbang like, as anyone else. I don't else. think, I don't think being on a porn set is hot. No, no, no I don't think so either. I, you know, you know what I learned? I don't know, Meredith, if we've talked about this, but, um, so the, the pop shot, right? The money shot. Okay. That was one of thing. the, um, the terms used throughout the book. Right? Pop yeah, shot. Right. <laughs> And they reference that all the time. And all I could think about was that I learned like a little while ago that, you know, men don't really come all that much. Yeah. Tr most men don't. Yeah. You know? Um, and so what they would do is they would fit like in porns, they film the man coming and then they'll they'll cut to the woman's face. And it's not ever they they basically put like lotion on her face. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's crazy. To like per, to look as if he had made all that cum, but like realistically, the cum that we see in a money shot in in porn is just a woman covered in like what is it, cerave? Yeah. Or whatever that stuff is. <laughs> like ketchup for blood. <laughs> yeah, essentially. So it's kind of you know it's interesting every time they mentioned it, and then a the couple times they mentioned how he could like really deliver a load, and I was like, oh, yeah. Wow. Like that's a talent. That's a yeah. needed skill yeah. in this field. You don't have God. to break out the bottle. Like you know, it's so true. Yeah. No. I mean, it was it was really interesting because I mean, like I I've never shied away from porn, and I've never seen porn as a negative tool and or or industry in general. I mean, that's what it is. But yeah. I this book really I feel like opened my eyes even more to like the industry yeah. and just that. I mean, it really is an industry. It's a business for a lot of people. Yeah. And I mean, I love that by the end, it, you know, kind of segues into them exploring more of like feminist porn and what are some of the sure. other types of porn. Sure. And uh, I, I wasn't expecting Morgan to also go into the femi feminist yeah, porn I, industry. That, surprised, that, uh, that did yeah. surprise me. Me too. Yeah, that was, I mean, I think if I had any negatives about the book, the biggest one would be, I feel like the ending was tied up all neat and pretty with a bow yes. very quickly. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I did like that too about Chase's transformation in that even by the end, yes, he's not going to be performing anymore, but he has a clear end goal and it's to continue working in the porn industry. He yeah. wants to direct. And I, I love that. I love that there was never really any shame surrounding this industry what's mm -hmm. it was just the shame that morgan was placing on it from what she thought the porn industry was right. before she actually has her eyes open to it so yeah it was it was refreshing that's what happened to like i mean i think that's pretty common for people who have like a like a solid mental health state who go into professional porn not necessarily like cam girling but like jenna jameson like, you know, had yeah. a long, prolific per career in porn. And then I think ended up marrying one of the directors. And he was basically like, I don't know why I know so much about Jenna Jameson. Anyway, he was basically like, um, you can do girl on girl or solo, but like we're married now. So you have to be faithful to me. Yeah. And then she started having kids and then she bought all the rights to all of her old movies. And that's what they make money off of. And I think he still directs, but they're like, 
there's no like, oh, my life is destroyed and I can't get a job. They just were like, okay, this is our business. How do we make this work for us as we like age out of it? Was that in like a 60 you know. minute special on TV? Like, I swear, maybe we watched something in like a human sexuality course I took in college where it was all about was Jenna Jameson in the Pirates movie, the like big pirate. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. that's what it was. Was it was all about how big of a success that movie was and how expensive yeah. it was, and then they followed her and I think a couple of the other stars like outside of filming to just see like what their life was like and she had like you know her big house in Texas with her husband and their children and it was great I loved it (laughs) and she's like a big advocate for like regulation in the sex work industry and like not censoring things like she's very fucking smart yeah she comes on a lot of talk shows and just like looks conservative people in the eye and is like um Actually, if you look at this statistic, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> She's like, great. Maybe that's who Callie was modeled after in this book because she was so. the yeah. one that was like getting her PhD or master's or something in yeah. like human sexuality. Yeah. Respect yeah. for her. Yeah. I kind of wanted him to end up with Callie, but I, she wasn't really into men, so it's yeah. not fair. But yeah, I mean, I think it, I agree with like the the ending being tied up in a nice bow. But I think that there were lots of part, I would say the pacing of this whole book was very fast. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it's mean, short, too. It's not a long book. No. And like she I mean, but they, so much happens. Yeah. So yeah. much <laughs> happens. I mean, like they break. I don't even I don't remember how long they were broken up for like a month. Like Tori and and uh, maybe Chase. two weeks, maybe, maybe two, two weeks. weeks, like between Christmas and, and then New like with it, they they meet and then within like two weeks they're like exclusive and then like oh yeah they're all their families oh, meeting met, and yeah, like yeah. like it's the whole like they they're they're the whirlwind of the uh, the romance. That's the perfect word. That is the perfect yes. word to describe. It. I wrote I was yeah. like tumultuous relationship much because like. Yeah. It was, how did I describe it? I said that it seemed like their relationship status moved faster than we were actually seeing the relationship. Like, yes. it felt like yes. they were saying, I love you. And I was like, yeah. wait, I am I feel like you're not At dating. Point, like, <laughs> Yes. The, and the way romance novels usually work is 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 uh, they follow classic storytelling. Yes. Right? There's meet cute, and then they develop. The, there's that little hesitation of like, is this for real? And then all of a sudden they fall into it, and then there's a conflict, and they break up, and yeah. then they get back together. Of course, right? And during the period where they're like, oh man, we actually really love each other. This is amazing. She says something about like we're gonna name our kids that, and I was like, whoa, girl, that's yeah. very soon. <laughs> it was fast. It was really fast because, and this is one of my. I I see this like as a constant issue when I'm reading romance and I love romance. I've been reading it for years, kind of the same Mm -hmm. way you have is that I did discover it through my mom, except she kept her books like on a bookshelf in the garage. And (laughs) oh, wow. um, (laughs) But it was I feel like uh, in a lot of romance that I read, I don't see enough of them actually falling in love or like the whole dating process which Mm. I don't know if that's just a symptom of the fact that we don't date anymore nowadays or (laughs) it's uh yeah I don't know I find it to be like a little we don't romanticize dating we romanticize yeah you know and think about it you go to a party and it's like how did you meet and it should be like, how has the last five years of your life been together? Right. Like, what's the biggest decision you just made? Yeah, like, exactly. Oh. We're yeah. married. We have three kids. Oh, you met on Tinder? Mm, I don't see that working. Like, yeah, yeah. That, was, that, yeah <laughs> that was back before people knew what Tinder was. We yeah. two people on there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I think, I mean, yeah, like I think, I think for a lot of people like your first year of your relationship is the hardest one, right? Oh, sure. There's so much adjustment. Yeah, it's funny too because the first year of your marriage is the hardest too. So right. it's like you have to you start it. over, right? right. <laughs> but like, yeah, I think you're 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 not like you both don't know quite how each other communicate your feelings or how to read yeah. those signs, yeah. and so it's like so to be so quickly in it uh, and oh, not yeah. have like and not have you know charted that course of those like right. normal relationship markers it is it, especially in a book that was written in 2019 that is that is a lot like and th- i mean it is very modern there's references to things that are like snapchat you know 90s 90s like trends and right like, 
you know, there's a lot of those markers that are happening in this book that, like, you realize this was written this year. Well, and like, you say markers, yeah. and that's, like, such a thing with romance novels, too, is there's generally markers in romance. Like, they meet, there's usually the the original, like, I don't know if we get along, and then there's usually, like, a kiss, and then something beyond yes. a kiss, and then they have right, sex, yes. you know? And it yes. it kind of jumped from, like, zero to 50, like, super yeah. quick. Yeah, they had sex before. Yeah. Like, I think I, like, flipped the page on my Kindle, and I was like, whoa, did they just have sex outside? Yeah. While hiking yeah. in the rain. Yes. <laughs> yeah, which you had sex hiking before. So I was like, oh, Meredith will identify with this part. <laughs> Me, I don't have sex outside. <laughs> well, and I'm no. like, I'm reading it as somebody in LA, and I'm like, okay, I identify with the hiking thing. I don't identify with the being outdoors in the rain in Los Angeles. Yes. People here don't yeah, no rain. rain. That. No, it's no rain. No. Also, they walked a lot. There's no walking in Los Angeles. No. 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 <laughs> Stop walking places. Where's so your funny. Uber? Yeah, where's your Uber? It's true. It's true. Yeah. So I mean, my <laughs> two things nobody like in went general were like sorry I, what was it nobody went to, nobody went to nobody went to brunch. brunch nobody made brunch plans that's where Very was unrealistic. where was the avocado toast like come exactly. on yeah no it's i mean you're totally <laughs> right but um it's yeah i feel like those were the two things for me that were kind of like stuck out to me a little bit where it's just like everything at the end wrapped up very quickly mm -hmm. and worked out well, I feel like for everyone except her awful sister, who's just a piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> Man, her sister sucks. Yes, yes. Well, and it's funny is at the beginning of the story, she was saying, the narrator was saying how much she liked her yeah. brother-in-law more than her sister. And I was like, oh, what a terrible woman-on-woman -woman crime. But then by the end of the book, I was like, nah, fuck your sister. She's awful. <laughs> and I did. I, I liked the brother-in-law. And I was like, God, I feel yeah. bad that this guy's stuck with this bitch. Like, <laughs> God. Well, yeah, I, I I'm not feminist of us, but yeah, yes. she was terrible. Oh, <laughs> I do. And I also I yeah, I think that that's that's a, you know, again, as someone who doesn't read a lot of romance novels, I don't know if this author like it does feel like there was a little bit of internalized misogyny in terms of like the way that that the author portrayed some of the women on screen on the in the book i mean except for, i think like again yeah. i think the yeah, major yeah, exception yeah. being called like callie callie mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, however she pronounces it yeah all the other but, women were like out for each other's throats exactly and like i really wish i again like i i, I don't know i don't I, I from not knowing a lot about romance novels but i'm mm. not really she oh, she only has like one really shitty friend like that she, and it's a work friend right oh and so she has no friend. other real friends that Who's... are that are in the book like i don't i'm like what that's the part that i was like does she not like she grew up in orange county like she has to have some friends in no, the right. you know what though meredith people there are a lot of women who are like that there were a lot of women who compete and hate other women and it sucks and it's yeah. fully internalized misogyny yeah. but like but then you look at the other characters in this book like Kali or, or or like even like his mom and you're like okay I, I guess I would yeah I was a little bit confused because I was like where like maybe this book was less of a romance than just the journey to becoming a feminist no, right. no for real for real because that's I actually wrote that down too was I was like I don't know if this is something that I would recommend to somebody as a romance novel. Like, I don't know if, yeah. I feel like the romance was yeah. second yeah. to the rest of the story. And, yeah. and that's not that I disliked that. Cause I no, really no, did find it to be a it. really interesting book. Right. And yeah. I think it paints the porn industry in a whole new way. Yeah, I, I like love that. that there's even somebody who defines feminism, like yeah, in the, the story. End. Right. That was, that was very 2019. Yeah. 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 <laughs> very, yeah. Very true. Yeah. I, I mean, well, and it's funny too, like you're in LA, we're in Brooklyn. And so for us, we're like, yeah, of course, that's what feminism is. But for most of the rest of America, they'd be like, what? exactly. I've never heard exactly. of it that way. Well, and like what so Meredith said about true. like, oh, isn't it weird that she doesn't have that many friends and she grew up there? I'm like, I honestly, that looks like LA to me. Like it's, it's really? just such a, uh, well, maybe. it's such maybe, a like you know fake what? city, you know? I think true, that also true. that might be that might be a, a result of of traffic. 
<laughs> it's hard to get around places. No. Right? It's no, hard to no, visit your friends. No, Meredith. <laughs> we're from Florida. Yeah, she doesn't. She has friends. We just don't see them because they're stuck in traffic. We're from Florida. We have traffic there and we managed to be. Well, but we did move. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't have an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I kind of like that. I, I mean, I almost kind of like that Morgan is basically the outsider right. in this mm-hmm. story. Yeah. In mm-hmm. that it's everyone within the porn industry that has these relationships and, you know, yeah. has a career. Absolutely. And, they have like a family. Yeah, for real, they're a family. And, like a found and family, she's the yeah. one that's left out of it. And it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it very, like we said, I feel like it's it's much more about figuring out what your, your kind of feminism is and what, you know, you are into sexually and that's okay as opposed to it being about a romance yeah i you know and i this is also these are all just me making assumptions about again ro- about romance not, not in a bad way but conjecture I, I, with yeah, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not a not not in a like negative just more of like i you know i don't know because i don't know the classic tropes of yeah. them there's all i'm assuming there's a lot of like sexual awakenings that happen with yes. the heroine right? yeah yeah whereas like I don't know if this, like, it, there was a sexual awakening here, but again, like, it felt weird. I do have to say, I really enjoyed, though, how the main character, Morgan, basically suffered trauma. Yes. Right. When it came to her sex life, right. and it didn't keep her from wanting to have sex. Yeah. Most of the time in romance novels, if the main heroine has suffered some kind of sexual trauma, she, like, doesn't even want to be touched. Yeah, right. exactly. And in this one, it was like, no, I just don't want to do this thing. Yes, like yeah. that is my boundary. Right. I think that, that and there was no question. Everybody was like, "Yeah, no, chill. That's your boundary. Don't have a problem with it." You know. Yeah, I think may- maybe if I maybe I guess like that. I think that because she was so clear. Like, that's what was so weird. It, it, there's a lot of like I guess just with Morgan in, t- in general. There's a lot of it, having your cake and eating it too. Right. Oh yeah, true. So it's like she she is having a sexual awakening and like being feeling comfortable saying what her wants and desires are for the first time Mm -hmm. yet she knows exactly what she wants really like that's what's weird like normally i think normally women truly actually don't know what Well, and what's interesting is she doesn't even really say what she wants most of the time chase chase is the one that is very supportive, willing to do whatever right. she wants, willing to not do whatever she doesn't want. Yeah. And he's the one who basically deciphers that she wants to have sex in public. He's the one right. who shares his fantasies. And she's still like throughout their whole process of, because it's interesting in the synopsis that they they make it seem like it's a lot about him fulfilling these three wild sex fantasies she has. and. Right. Yeah. That was just so on the back burner to me. Like, I didn't yes, see yes, that as yes. like, I'm going to give you a story and in exchange, I'll fulfill these fantasies for you. Like, right. that would have been very clear cut. And I think that's kind of why we're going a little back and forth on what was this book exactly? Because yes. it doesn't really <laughs> define itself and it doesn't yeah. give you this clear cut you give me this, I'll give you this, we will solve each other's problems this way, which is kind of the right. typical yeah. romance setup. Romance novels, and I notice, I, I've noticed this a lot with romance novels, they try to do so much in a book. Yes. Uh, and, and they don't need to. And they don't need to. Like, this story could have been one night. Three fantasies, one night. Like, they're trapped together somewhere. It could have been, like, a one-set a one set play, you know? It really, and we could have explored a lot of things, and characters could have come in and out, but it would have been like that. They, they, they I find romance, and this is not just this book, romance novels all the time take so much time and cram it into 300 pages. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they don't really trust the space. Right. Uh, that's my writing yeah. critique that I well, have for porn. I Sorry. Guess, I guess <laughs> back to my conjectures, or, like, this is more sure. of a question. Yes. You know, I guess I, I also don't I don't know the separation of like romance novels and like true erotica, like true porn. There's fix, not a right? hard line. There's right? a lot of gray. So area. it's like so this would have been a great a great 
just porn. It could have been. Like, right? Like, removing a lot of the romance elements yeah, and actually, make it like, raunchier. really making it raunchy. Like, really exploring. Like, amp up those kinks. Yeah. Like, fantasy, I'm your boss, you're my secretary. Let's make that gnarlier. Yeah. Well, it's about it's about porn. So, I mean, I definitely expected it to be a lot more erotic yeah. than what it was. Because, like you said, a lot of the sex scenes we get, and there are plenty, yeah. They're not, they're not sexy. I mean, yeah. it's very much like we're on a porn set and these guys are like coming all over. Well, her. and also yeah. I guess, I guess in this, I think in this story too, it almost would have been more interesting without the romance. Interesting. Okay. We had a lot of explanation. Like we had a lot of exposition about their backgrounds, how they grew up, what, what things like reminded them of memories from the past sailing with Grant. You know, we just had these like long pieces of exposition and then the porn, the 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 sex scene itself would be a page right and like if you're gonna if you're gonna do porn like let's get into every nitty gritty right. detail. Yeah. let's talk about fluids yeah let's talk about body parts let's yeah. get into all of it yeah porns porns we watch porns all the time they're two hours long 30 minutes of it is story yeah the rest is sex. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think I, I think yeah because like i think it would have like i think we could have gotten to the same result of the story without the romance elements of it that's that's why i'm like i'm saying like i don't know what the hard line between because i think it would have been super interesting to write this story and say these two people came each other and like kind of came found each other in kind of a hard times of their life one who needed to like like rediscover her her sexual desires and another person who needed to like yeah. rethink what he wanted in his career and what would be and being a burned hel- by and a woman. what a healthy relation like he sh- he really yeah. should not be in a relationship right yeah. now period yeah. so he should Fair. figure out what a healthy relationship is and um i think that it would have just been really interesting if they did have that tit for tat game the whole time where they were playing this like cat and mouse game and then discover like hey we're really good friends and like you know we let's try help, dating like we helped each other out and mm. yeah let's now try dating maybe like that would yeah that would have been a really interesting story yeah, so we've yeah. basically written like three different versions of this book yes. <laughs> like we've got like the novel the gritty novel that's more about like yes. the industry we've got you know the and erotica just just straight up fuck <laughs> Okay. You know what though? It was a really fun read. I yeah, do have to say. It was fun. It was really fun. It was fun. And you know what? As yes, it was as funny. quick as they wrapped things up at the end, I really loved the ending and that fulfilling her final fantasy was basically like them filming their own little homemade porn together. Yeah, yeah. I was also into that. Yeah. I thought that was great. And, and because we find out, you know, about halfway through the story that like her biggest hang up with the porn industry is that her ex-boyfriend you know basically like made her watch it with him and like explore things that he wanted to explore but she never really got much say in it and i mean he basically abused her yeah that that yeah she had she was in a uh unenthusiastic situation right where it's like you know like um no means no like it also needs to be it also needs to be yes means yes and she never really was in that yes means yes sex. she was like coerced yeah. into like i yeah that's my feel i mean yeah. which i i mean i i think we've all oh, experienced it, that kind of situation hundred percent like that is a very com- like that's the aziz and sorry story right that's a very common that's a that's that's much more of like the type of uh, of trauma that yeah. real women deal with on an everyday basis. Not that not that there's you know again one in four people have experienced sexual right. assault, but that is like that is a story I think almost every woman has experienced. That is mm-hmm. like a just a general state of doing things that you because you want to please your yeah. your partner and and act, even though you're not really in it to win it yourself right when well, they we see that with chase too in his his broken relationship yep. is the woman he was with she basically wanted him to take on this dominant role yep. in their relationship and he didn't and he didn't want to want to do that so i, yeah. I liked they, that they there was kind of like together. that parallel yeah they could have come together over that a little bit more 
Yeah, I, I would have liked that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, yeah, more, more, more of like seeing Morgan dominate would have been fun. Yeah, yeah for I real. Was, it, halfway through the story, I was like, "Is she going to peg Especially, him? She let it happen." Well, because like sh- that's what he said he wanted. That's my number three. That's fantasy. what he said. Yeah. He I want to fuck and you. So <laughs> I was like, "Yes, he." That's what my he said number he one famous fantasy. We, yeah. so, we actually yeah. read a femdom uh, romance recently, and <gasps> it was. But that's that's exactly kind of where I thought that was going too. Was when he said that he wanted to be like pushed around and dominated. I yes. was like, oh shit, so yes, let's go there. <laughs> yes. Like here we go. Exactly. And she yeah. she does like a um like a pole dance routine instead, which I'm like, that's yeah. great. I mean, good for you. That's that's fun. I feel like we need more pole dancing in romance novels. But also, it is great exercise. Wasn't exactly what I expected. Yeah, I mean, I get. I think jumping into that role would have been a big leap for someone who was like having a hard time with a role play. So I that's get that. True. That's but very at the true. Same time, like <laughs> I wish like if we were at the end, like that's what, where we ended. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I was like, yes, please. Yeah. We also dropped his whole toy. Yeah. His, what was it? His princess scepter. Yeah. We never scepter. got like talk about, you know, in the beginning of the movie, when you see the gun on the wall, like yes. we never saw that gun go off. <laughs> well, we have, we have the very end where he pulls out like a new vibrator and he's like, it's my, my Barbie blue or oh, whatever, yeah, you know? Right. And I'm like, no, oh, I'm, okay. I wanted to see the other one in action. <laughs> yeah. On him. Full <laughs> cyclical. Yeah. Someone uses it on you, Prince. Yes. This is how the monarchy yeah. falls. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. in general, though, I, I have to say, I think my favorite thing about the story is how almost everyone, and I feel like I say that with the exception of Morgan's shitty sister. Yeah. It seems like everybody else in the book is very, not only sex positive, but porn positive. Like down to yes. yeah. the side characters of like her work buddy, her boss, like yeah. her, her parents are very supportive of their relationship. Like even her dad, who she thinks yeah. is, you know, very conservative. He's like, well, you know, uh, you know, if you're happy and you love him, like mm, whatever. And uh, so I liked that. That's kind of a fantasy. Yeah. Like in its own way. Yeah. That's the real fantasy yes. of the three fantasies. Yes. It's a world <laughs> where people aren't uncomfortable talking about porn. Because yeah. I feel like neither one of our podcasts would exist if people could just Exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah. gosh, I know. If only someday, someday. <laughs> if only I, you know, yeah. porn stars were famous enough for tabloids to follow them, exactly. so that we we cared <laughs> that men in porns actually looked attractive and yes. not like what they look like. Sorry, men in porn, <laughs> <laughs> but you're not cute. <laughs> usually not. Yeah, usually oh, not. I know. Okay, this. I don't know why this annoyed me so much. Throw pillows. Um, <laughs> but there was a. Uh, her boss kept nagging her to get like this big story, right? And I was like, um, hello, the story is you're dating a porn star. Like oh, what? Yeah. yeah. My I don't understand. Days. Why are you still looking for yeah, a story? Yeah. Like That's you are absolutely. dating a porn star. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good point. What are his habits? <laughs> what is so his funny. sex like? I thought it was gonna end with like, and here's my like, you know, very how to lose a guy in ten days, but like how to date a porn star. Like, right. Yeah, that would have, yeah, you're right. That would have been a great way to end it. But I like the, I like the ending better. I, I do. do like I yes, do I like the introduction. But it would have been in terms of, yeah, like it's. Uh, I'm, I'm glad but that, another fantasy. No, yes. no two white men out there are going to invest in a production company about feminist oh porn. Oh my God. Well, and never one of will the, that happen. Being her Double dad. fantasy. <laughs> No, <laughs> especially not your dick. No. Oh my gosh, I, I did Progressive like aggressive men that are part of a sailing club. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did love that their company not only does feminist porn, but like they offer the service to basically like come film your own porno, like with your partner. I thought but those exist. Th- well, and I and I was like, that's got to be a thing. That has to be a thing because people do like the boudoir photo shoots and yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that uh, absolutely, I exists. love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, to to they have a podcast, but mainly they're a feminist porn company. Ersties 
is it makes feminist porn and they do couple porn. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But if you're I have you know, you're hanging out list. later, I'll add it post to shower, <laughs> you're ready to masturbate and you're just like, I wanna watch something that makes me feel good. <laughs> they they make pretty decent porn. Right after my bear lady. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can't they can't hold a candle, unfortunately. <laughs> never. No, I, never. I like them, but I no. <laughs> I can't. I'm never. so excited. I might not wait until my friends come over for the weekend. Like honestly, I might need to watch it before then. Uh, I think also well i think there's a it, when you get to my bear lady there's like a sex scene and then like i i you're you're not quite sh- i had a feeling there would be musical elements and then i wasn't really i then you're like you're like it's not gonna happen don't then tell it, them it's a musical <laughs> no then it absolutely happens. not it happens just and you're play like, it what they'll be like okay we're watching a porn that's weird and then when you get to just see their faces they'll love it they'll love it they'll love yeah. it they'll come for the for the porn and they'll stay for the musical yeah, that's, that's what we did <laughs> that's exactly our journey <laughs> oh my god okay well last thing i've got for you is oh well almost last thing is do you have a specific sex excerpt from the story so that many. you would like to read for us so many uh i i marked down ones that i really wanted to read out loud uh this was i think in the first one it's just a few sentences here um she had always wondered if porn stars really knew what they were doing now she knew and she'd never forget <laughs> I just that is very yeah. dramatic and I enjoyed it. Hang on, I have I was gonna say, you have let me find friend. another one and I'll pass it to you. Hang on. Basically, <laughs> while reading this book, if you what do they call I uh, see I think of it as cum shot, but what do they call it? Hot shot, pot, pot shot? Pot, pot shots. Hot pot shots. Pot shots. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this one's amazing. That could be a drinking game is count the pot shots. Oh yeah. This really tickles oh, me. Oh yeah, this one is good. Standing bare before Morgan, she snacked voraciously as the semen of 11 men seeped into her pores. Thankfully, pungent pepperoni mass soggy spunk. Oh, my God. I forgot the about that scene. Yeah. Of pungent yeah. pepperoni and soggy spunk. Funk. Yeah, that one I is mean, good. I mean, I'd, I'd give her an award for that. Can you, <laughs> Probably can, a Hugo, can you though, because this is a sci-fi, but. Can you give a brief explanation of what's going on in that scene? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So she has just watched a scene with Callie getting uh, the interracial gangbang. That was organized where she's really kind of getting, I think, a true introduction of like what the porn industry is. And uh, Callie like has this amazing gangbang with 10 men. And yes, uh, but and they called 11 in case one flaked. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and yeah. And then she, you know, like in most gangbangs, they, they all come on her at the right. end, particularly on her face. And yep. then after they're done, they're like, all right, break for pizza, like union break, like everybody. And then they run into this room. And even though they're all like, sweaty and disgusting they all just devour pizza because they're all so hungry and she doesn't wipe off her face or anything she's just I like know, just throw no the pizza on top it's all good <laughs> oh man i love to i've that. tasted enough semen in my day <laughs> what's That's... what's a little more on my pizza it's great yeah. it's a great dressing it's like ranch yeah there's there's the the protein <laughs> i also really enjoyed the dirty talk during the uh boss secretary sex scene um, because I personally love a role play. Sure. And it's hard to find a partner who's willing to really, truly commit yes. to the, the game. And some of the things that uh, Chase was saying were like, really? Well, and let's be honest, he commits, like, they, they actually go do it in her boss's office at in work. Office. I'm yes. like, wow, the commitment. Yeah. Yes. Well, she, and, and like, she even, like, pulls in and out of character. She and he, you know. And he he pushes her on the copy machine and like takes copies yeah. of her boobs. And then she's like, he he, you're perverted. And he said, uh, he's like, beg me to not pass these around the office. And I was like, yeah, OK. I love it. <laughs> I was like, where do I find that kind of dialogue? <laughs> uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one. That was, although I kept yeah, thinking, because like out. one of her coworkers like sees them, but I was like, oh, here's the smoking gun. You know, those photocopies of her tits are going to like be everywhere tomorrow. But I thought, no, I, I, I thought that, that I think I thought that for a second, but then I realized I was like, they work in a super unprofessional environment. <laughs> and if that, and if they found those, they would not give a fuck. Yeah. They <laughs> literally would not. I was like, because when that guy came in, with, like she was watching porn in the office in the right. very beginning of this whole book. Like mm-hmm. I was like, "There's no way they're ever really gonna care if her broad breasts are 
there's five copies sitting yeah. on the copier. Like very it's not true, be very true. I so. have I have more evidence that this book is a fantasy novel <laughs> and not actually romance because there is a, a thing that happens in this book that has never happened anywhere. And if it has, please invite me. <laughs> <laughs> and that is. What is it? They Oh, they go to a, a place called Whiskey Pins, with it, which hosts a monthly porn star bowling and karaoke night. That's a thing. It is a thing. That's a thing here in L.A. <gasps> <gasps> Meredith, who, so there, there you there go. Will be porn oh trip. God. Let's go. Oh go. <laughs> there you go. There's the go. one reason to come to L.A. right yeah. there. Wow. <laughs> I love bowling. I love karaoke. I, lo- I yes. love porn. Yes. It, it's basement. It, it, I was gonna say it's a triple threat. Yeah, I've never been. <laughs> I would but lose I my mind. Know that that's a thing. So I mean, again, that's like one more reason. I'm like, I feel like Castboard is basing a lot of this off of yeah, real people, real events, like a real industry mm-hmm. and everything. So yeah, there you go. I Come to LA. <laughs> yeah, I would love a series yes. on porn romance. Yes, I would, I would devour that. Yeah, yes. where's mm-hmm. yeah? Where's the next book in the series? Like, who's gonna fall in love next? I want Callie. I want Ooh. Callie's oh, romance. I hope it's. I, or if it's no, or if it's none of these people, but just like a you know, it's like an anthology series of different yeah. porn like types. I mean. I personally recently discovered my love of gay porn, so I oh, would. Oh yeah, we both love, we both love that. I'm with you. I would love. Ooh, what about her friend at work, Sean? Yes. Yeah. He a falls, story all he about falls Sean. For like a like a silver zag. Yeah. Yes. He went to that party, had a meet cute with someone, and then like yes. his yes. Oh, that. That I would, would love great. that. I would so read that book. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. We've just given Cats Ford the next two potential books in the stories. We've got yeah. Yeah, we Sean and his daddy. And yes. 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 Sean and his daddy. We we don't need royalties, Cass, but if you want to put our podcasts in your acknowledgement, that would be yeah. really helpful. Solid <laughs> choice. <laughs> I had I had an excerpt from one of their I think this is from this is from their last time together when they film themselves having sex. Mm, and mm-hmm. it's Oh, when he pulls out the, uh, you know, the blue G-spot vibrator that he's named Barbie Blue. Oh, of course. Um, As he thumbed her budding clit, he switched the toy on. She shivered as the humming trinket entered her body. With deep breaths and curled toes, her entire body tightened. He knew exactly where to go. Yeah, I'm a fan of like when people incorporate toys into the bedroom and oh, also in, into books. I'm like, I yes. want to see more toy play. We do have one PSA though. Meredith brought this up. Oh yeah, I guess I guess, about I guess toys. my specific, my major, the only <laughs> again, my real problem with uh, the story of like, throw or, like anything, anything like yeah, throw pillows or like yes, exactly, basically like, throw pillows, was, yes, or like or promoting it at all is that. Coconut oil is not a good lube. You should not use it. No, it's oil-based. It degrades silicone, so it's not good for condoms. It's bad for your sex Yeah, and it it messes up your pH. You're much more likely to get yeast infections, both male and female. Water-based lube. I I mean, like, if you're really really in a dire, like, situation, it isn't bad. But, like, it's not – it definitely should not be your – Go, your only lube used. Use spit. Well, and yeah. when they said when both the the people who were on set said that it was like the best out there, and then Morgan's like, yeah, and we we tried out different lubes, and you know Chase and I confirmed it's the best. I'm like, how is it the best? I'm I'm curious. Like, are we talking yeah. about like it? It it smells nice and it's good for your skin. Like what what are we talking about? Why is coconut oil the best? Which clearly it's not. It yeah. might be the best for men. It's not good for no. vagina. No, it's so not good for vagina. Back it out of a vagina. Yeah. No, thank you. It's, yeah, like uh, like Caitlin said, it's oil based, so it's like it's oil gonna also ruin your not. toys. It's gonna ruin the condoms. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not like you. That's why water based lube is the best. Also, it is the best. Also, <laughs> just if you're in a pinch, just use spit, and if you can't salivate. Like we said, you can just lick somebody. They're probably <laughs> there sweating. You go. Get your salt. <laughs> Salty. I like it. I like it. So you come to L.A. for porn star, um, you know, bowling and karaoke. You go to New York for 
licking people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's accurate. Well, wow. yeah, or explore, exploring real weird fetishes, I think. <laughs> this is where you explore we have the all weird the dungeons. Stuff. Yeah. If, you, if you need a dungeon, you don't want to just have karaoke with A lot more, women. Gen- well, also just like, like I, a lot more like fluid sexual identities in general. Oh, yeah, that is true. Gender, sexual. We can fill your yeah. whole rainbow yes. what you need, honestly. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Okay, well, the last thing I'm going to ask you ladies to do is to give the book a few grades, and we're going to grade for story, syntax, and sexcapades on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the very best that it could possibly be. So let's start with the story. Overall story for the book, out of 10, what do you think? I'm going to give it a 5. I think that was a, that was all of our most problematic highlights of things that did like you know accentuating on things that didn't need to be focused on sure. and th- mm-hmm. things like that. So, uh, yeah, and and just how nice the with a bow it was wrapped up. Uh, I I I will give it a that's that's yeah that's I'm feeling neutral on it. I'm gonna give it seven. Okay, based on the library of romance novels that I've read, and knowing that. Most of the time you can predict what happens and it's like, you know, follows kind of the same pattern. This thing was was crazy in a way that was so fun that I'm going to give it. It was a good read. It was fun. That's true. Yeah. So, okay. So you kind of liked the uh, the change of pace. Yeah. Okay. That, no, that's great. Yeah. I, I fell right in between the two of you. I gave it a six, yeah. six and a half. Oh, perfect. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, okay, perfect. And then how about the syntax? So what did we think of Miss... Cast forward style. I mean, pungent pepperoni yes. for something spunk. Ten. Ten <laughs> out of ten for me, honestly. Yeah, I was going to give it an eight. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not it's not super complex or crazy. It's easy to read. Uh, but it's definitely so fun. And they're, they're super. There's really fun lines. It's it's jokey. And it's not. Um, it's definitely not, like, moronic or idi- like, it's definitely not a low. Yeah. Like, I would never call it a. a you know, like kind of like base intelligence at all. It's very smart and thoughtful and, and the syntax was great. Yeah. I, I gave it a nine too. I feel like the only thing that was like a little off for me was I felt like sometimes we would jump from one scene to another kind of abruptly. Like it would go from yeah. Morgan, um, you know, about to confront her parents and then we would jump from there yeah to, yeah. Uh, yeah sometimes i was like a little bit like where are we yeah but i would get there but yeah but yeah. i mean overall i thought the tone was great i i mean put it this way like just based off of this book i would definitely read something else by cast forward because I, I found yeah. it so entertaining and fun when it needed to be and then also you know kind of making not making fun, but making a subject that's not usually considered fun more fun. So uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I liked that it was it was a more serious topic that took a much lighter tone. So yeah, yeah. kudos to you, Miss Cass Ford. Um, <laughs> how about sexcapades? Yeah, I know. I think for me, <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than the dialogue, the role play dialogue for me, like honestly, like a two. Yeah, I was gonna say a four. I feel like yeah, you almost like have to grade it like on the sex that the two of them have versus the sex in the porn. Yes, yes. yeah, and also just constantly talking about sex too kind of desensitizes you to like right. yeah when he, when they actually get naked together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. I guess again, me making a conjecture about porn, about um, romance novels is there's probably a lot more metaphors for their like sexual tension, where yes. they're like addressing their sexual tension very openly and clearly, which yeah. is the sexual tension I'm used to. Like the, I, I, uh, I had like an em- like a empath feeling with this character, and like how that's how my kind of you know build up to sex usually is. Uh, but yeah, I guess like in a you mean like, hey, you want to fuck me, don't you? Yeah, do. Let's yeah. do it. Or just like talk about fantasies and not actually necessarily have sex right then and there. Like you know, like they, oh, sure, yeah, sure, sure. yeah. Like I guess how I do it now. You know, with yeah, like, with you have a partner. So. No, no, <laughs> that that makes sense though. In that it's I I'm I always find slow burn romance novels to be the sexiest because I'm like, oh, oh my god, there's truly, so much build yes. up. There's oh, yeah. so much build up. I agree. And then, yeah. You know, it's just yes. going to explode. And then this one, there was never that moment because not only do they have sex really quickly, but you are seeing sex constantly throughout the yeah. book and it mm. becomes less and less sexy. Right. 
So much like yeah, it's, it's a hard one. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. a, it's complicated to think about because I I again I appreciate that it that is truly how people navigate sex actually. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's less sexy because it's so real. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted to let like he's a porn star. Yeah, I wanted to see all of his tricks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I you yeah, like I'm not saying that they always have like three hour bang sessions, but right. I'm sure like that occasionally they do. And it would be a lot more fun if we like knew about every position they explored and then like right. what they didn't like I don't know. Yeah. If, yeah, if I'm dating a construction worker, I'm not gonna be like just half finish my toilet. Right. Yeah. Like you're gonna build me a whole fucking house. Let's go. You're gonna yeah, yeah. you're gonna redo my whole bathroom. <laughs> well, and I think I think and I think also like, I I honestly I don't care a lot about him like. I don't about, think he went down on her that I much. I don't think he went down on her that much, and it would have been a lot more fun for her to like for us to be in her mind yeah. and like her like yeah. all of the Agreed. feelings, Agreed. all all of the things she's thinking about when he's going down on her and like and the there's sensation of, she's describing and, and whatever. There's a lot of value put on his dick, but it doesn't really do right. much. Right, and yeah. like they mention, I think a couple times they're together. He doesn't even come, and then he she specifically is like, "You didn't finish." She's like oh, well, I have to save it up because I'm going to be on set yeah. later. And you're just yeah. like, okay, this just pulled me right out of the romance yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm with yeah, you. It would definitely sure. get a lower score than the others. It's hard for me to even grade it just because it feels so... It's almost non-sexual. Yeah. yeah. Because of all the yeah. sex. Yeah. Like, I, if I was just grading their sex scenes, I have to say I'd give them points for being adventurous in that... They're outside. They're in her office. They definitely have some, you know, variety. But um, I'm with you, too, where I'm like, okay, I thought, like, she's banging a porn star. This is going to be, like, off the charts hot. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm I'm with you. I'd probably give it, like, a four or five just for the sex. That's fair. Good. (laughs) Well, okay, Meredith especially um, is now having read a romance novel is – this something that you would read again are you more interested in reading romance well so so i mean yeah caleb's like no no yeah i'm <laughs> no. not a big and romance fine. Person. it's fine it's a, if it's a no <laughs> yeah no it's really my favorite genre of film is action movies and if there's any oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's very funny it's is like there a porn fast and furious is it yeah we'll, we'll do that exactly but also the reason i love fast and the furious is because there's not a lot of romance in it I think like I gotcha. like I think I like my genres separated. I like and and not that I can't enjoy a a romance novel, but like I want to I I like it's almost like be cheesy, like like live in that moment, right? So I liked I actually though in terms of like someone who's interested in the porn industry, um, I liked that it was like about a lot of different things and it almost was like a sociological book a little bit in terms of yeah. on top of a romance so i thought mm-hmm. that was really interesting but yeah no i feel like i do need to read like a, a historical romance novel now I've because got some i for you like, i have some suggestions like, because if you I, want. I am interested <laughs> i do like history books i do i like actually do mostly read nonfiction. so i'm like i should oh, okay. i should try and like explore that a little more but yeah no i mean yeah again i've never i'm never like against the, any one genre or anything like that it's just maybe a, not necessarily for me but yeah i should i should i would say yes i would say this is was a very easy read um i enjoyed it it was fun and yeah there's no reason not to to like like include smut in your uh in my reading repertoire why not oh yeah why Mm -hmm. not and then caitlin um i you know having mentioned historical romance is that what you usually tend to read uh over contemporary yes uh yeah okay the only contemporary writer i read for a long time was rachel gibson oh my god she was like my first romance novelist that i read that's who introduced me me too oh cool yeah, I really liked them. Some of her stuff is a little problematic now that I go back <laughs> reading it's it. been a while. Because <laughs> yeah. it's been, time has passed. Uh, but now I really like Lisa Kleypas. Kleypas. Oh my God, another one of my all-time faves. So, okay, we are clearly yeah. on the same track with our romance. Yes. So, I mean, and I would absolutely read another Cass Ford if she writes yeah. one because this is really too. fun. Yeah, I totally yeah. would. Yeah, I, w- I would definitely, now that I know what her style is, like, even though like there's parts of 
uh, the story that we didn't love or there's like the sex was not hot. Like it was still like we said, very, very it fun to fun. read. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like Meredith, I think you should check out historical fi- uh, romance for sure. And Lisa Kleipas is a great person to go with because she basically writes everything. And I'm, I'm sure you've read it, Caitlin. She does that whole What's that whole series? The Wallflower series? Did you read that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I read that one. I love that one. That one's great. Um, But I would also recommend, I feel like maybe Meredith would like like full out erotica, like something that's much yes. more. Yes. She yes. absolutely would yes, sex <laughs> oriented than like the actual yeah. story. So I, I yes. feel like you would like that. Yeah. Start I with know. penthouse letters. Okay. Yeah. There you the go. Newer ones, not the old ones. <laughs> yeah. So there's definitely a wide variety and hell you like action. There's action adventure romance too. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's true. There's a spy romance. Yeah. Recently. Listen, I have things for you, Mary. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> So basically what we're telling you is that you say you're not going to read more romance, but it's going to happen <laughs> anyway. Going to make you Peer pressure. The only thing you're getting for your birthday is romance novels. There you Forever. go. Forever. <laughs> Every birthday. <laughs> Here's a stack. Merry Christmas. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so glad we did this and I'm... I'm glad that this was the book that we read because, again, I know. <laughs> oh, it was so perfect. Yeah. It's so Honestly, funny. Yeah. yeah. When I first saw, so heard funny. about it, I was like, oh my gosh, you know who'd be perfect? There will be porn. Duh. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm, we were so, I mean, we were so happy to be able to do this and kind of right. marry what is essentially the same thing, which is talking about sex, yep. but really from two different, you know, jo- like chick lit is what's considered women's content and then porn is considered male content, yep. but they're so similar. Yes, they Absolutely, are. Yeah. absolutely. Well, mm-hmm. good. Well, I'm so glad you did this with me and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you for having us. It's yes. been wonderful. It you was like, it. I mean, you gave us like, it was, we had a homework assignment. We did Love research. Homework, I do too. And it makes obviously <laughs> like the conversation is, it's like you get to you get to talk about all that stuff and Mm -hmm. and that's like i mean what we're used to we like talking about all the nitty-gritty of a story well and like you said if nothing else you got to read a book (laughs) yeah exactly yeah i i accomplished something today yes exactly it's good we should all check something off our to-do list today yes yeah (laughs)